Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you a general rule of thumb to calculate your approach speed of an aircraft. Now keep in mind that this is a general rule of thumb. There's going to be quite a few differences uh, depending on the different scenarios that you're going to be exposed to for different flights. So right now we have our real world weather turned down, uh, in case anybody's curious on why we're getting banked around so bad. And now uh, we've just taken off from a lovely Hartford, Connecticut here. And we're going to be taking a big old left turn. And we're going to be using everybody's uh, least favorite runway at this airport, which is going to be a runway 29 or there. The reason nobody's really a fan of that one is, as you can tell, I'm just looking out here out the back window, it is a bit of a tiny runway. So it's actually pretty cool. Aircraft of the day, of course, uh, we got ourselves a Cessna 182. Uh, the reason I like this one is because it's a good example of this. So let's go ahead and uh, pause right now. I'm going to use my throttle. I need that much. So right now, if you take a look at my airspeed indicator, you'll notice that it has a series of different zones in it. You have this white arc, you've got a green arc, you've got a yellow, and you've got yourself a red arc. You'll notice, other than the fact that my airspeed is rapidly decreasing, which makes sense, that we have a bottom of a white arc sitting right here at 40 knots. Now, the FAA says that if you're looking to calculate your approach speed of an aircraft, you simply take the stall speed with flaps and you multiply that by 1.3. So let's go ahead and uh, run that calculation real fast. So we know we stall at 40 knots. If we do it, multiply that by 1.3, that means that we get a 52 knot approach speed. Now, if you think about that for just a few moments there, you'll sit there going, 52 knots approach speed? Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I would think the exact same thing because in a Cessna 182, you don't approach at 52 knots. That would be absurdly slow. So um, we're gonna go ahead and humor the FAA here. Now we're gonna try it at 52 knots and uh, see what exactly happens uh, during our approach here. So let's go ahead and unpause. I will go ahead and finish up my turn here and we'll go bring us uh, back down for a landing. <laughs> 52 knots, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's a whole lot of nope in this plane. So we're gonna humor them and now I'll show you exactly what this looks like. All right, I'm going to come swing around here. I'll pop those flaps down, get that nice and early. And we need a nice, dirty, dirty airplane in order to get this thing down. Now, I have a fun story with this particular runway. Is uh, One time, the main runway had so many birds on it that nobody could use it because you'd basically die a bird strike. So, of course, this was also an Ocessna 182, and I had passengers in the back seat. And they're like, no, no, it'll be fine. No, we can, we'll do the short run runway. I'm like, oh, okay, Pax. I don't think you're going to like this very much. Anyway, let's go ahead and get slowed down to 52 knots. Oh, my... <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, so this is, uh, this doesn't feel right. This does not feel right at all. I mean, ignore the turbulence for a second, by the way. But uh, 52 is pretty slow. I feel like we're barely moving here. Uh, the flaps are in the correct position here. I got to clear the trees. And oh my gosh, this thing wants to depart. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoa. Oh boy, that is uh, the sketch. <laughs> All right, good old uh, runway 29er here. Here we come. Power's out. Nose this up. Oh, this is a 182. And there we go. Put that uh, right wing down. We'll go ahead and hold the brakes. And you can see that we got ourselves uh, down uh, fairly safely here at that obnoxiously low speed. So, um, what's the actual published approach speed on a 182? Now, this is where things get interesting. The Ocessna 182 is not a mistake. It actually notices here that it says to use the higher number of this again. This is the actual stall speeds. But you can see right from this article here that you can't fly a final approach at 40. They just call them for 46 knots. The POH suggests a final approach speed of 60 to 70 knots. So that's kind of an interesting example here of uh, where the math says one thing, but it actually shows you that gives you almost double the stall speed. So what does that look like? That gives you a setup that looks a little bit like this. So we have the same runway, same uh, incredibly turbulent conditions here. Uh, welcome to Connecticut during this time of the year, by the way. This is what happens. And we see that lovely runway off our nose. Now, they say 60 to 70 knots here. Now, the interesting thing is in the uh, 182 that I fly in the real world, I actually have it in miles per hour because it's an older version of the 182. So, you know, I approach it usually typically 70 miles per hour is standard. Uh, 70 miles per hour into knots, it works out to be roughly 60 knots, which is still quite a bit faster than that 1.3x there. So let's go ahead and align ourselves up at the ground here. I'll go ahead and skip a little bit of time. 
you got to like the ability to sort of fast forward. I can do this in the real plane too, but um, they tell us not to abuse it because apparently, you know, damages like the tides and everything else under the sun. All right, so our flaps are in the correct landing position. I can see that lovely runway right off our nose. We're getting bounced everywhere here. Uh, that's that lovely new turbulence model. Uh, one of the later videos this week, by the way, will be dedicated to shutting that turbulence off if it bothers you. I know our good folks over in VR land uh, really, really struggle when their screen is uh, doing one of those things when they're trying to do something important, like putting the plane on the ground. Yeah, I could definitely see why that'd be critical. All right, let's see here. Whoop. <laughs> You'd think I, if you look at my controls themselves, I'm barely moving them, and you can see how hard I'm getting knocked around here. That is just the uh, fun of flying, by the way. In the real world, it's the same exact thing. Okay, Ooh, get over those trees. Whoa. <laughs> That's ridiculous. This would not be a flying day if it were that bad. All right, we're at 182, so uh, we pulled the power out very slowly as we start getting close to the ground. Again, we came in at the published stall, or the published approach speed this time, as opposed to it. Now, notice how much easier it is to see down the runway here. And we're down, brakes on. All right, so you can see from those two examples that that 1.3x there, it was actually pretty dangerous. Uh, we almost departed uh, more than one time on that approach, whereas when we came in at the 182's recommended speed, which was a little bit marginally faster, it was better. What happens if you scale up? All right, so now we have ourselves a Beechcraft 18. This is a big rumbly rumbly twin radial engine airplane. Now the reason I pulled this aircraft down is because it has a substantially higher number for its actual stall speed. So uh, when we test our little 1.3x theory, uh, we'll definitely go ahead and check this one out. So if we look down here, uh, we can see that our stall speed is indicated at about 67 knots. So if I grab out our calculator one more, uh, 67. We're going to go 67 times 1.30 gives us an approach speed of 87.1 knots. So 87.1 knots, uh, that sounds pretty good, but uh, one of the complications, of course, is that we have that little red line right now. Uh, that red line is uh, to remind us that if we have an engine out, uh, we could be in a particularly bad spot as far as uh, control of the aircraft goes. If I don't watch myself, I'm not going to have control of my airplane already because I'm already at a good 2,000 feet. Um, folks, uh, please, when you make airplanes for flight sims, don't make the default view like this. See how the head is tipped down? Don't do that. <laughs> Let us, the users, decide where we want to tip our heads down or not tip our heads down. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one again. So we're looking for an 87-knot approach uh, based on what the uh, good folks over at the uh, federal government tell us that we should be using for this particular aircraft. So I'll go ahead and slow down. Uh, keep in mind, we have the critical engine problem here that we have to need to be thoughting of thinking of, because thoughting of isn't really a thing. But uh, if you look right now, we get that little red line right at 80. So no matter what happens, if we were to go under 80 knots, uh, we'd be in a really, really bad spot. Because if we lost that engine, we tried to apply full power, uh, we wouldn't get very far very soon. So let's go ahead and uh, take our left base turn. This is a not a proper conventional uh, traffic pattern by any means here, but that's not the point of this exercise. Now, I noticed one thing right away is the uh, turbulence is not nearly as bad with this plane. Uh, like, I'm still getting bounced around and everything, but it's not nearly to the same extent that I was in the other aircraft. All right, let's go sneak my head out the window here. Go ahead and take that nice gradual turn. Hello, Route 84. You don't seem to be that backed up today. Surprising. I'll go ahead and take that, and we can see that runway. And we actually uh, went out to sea a little bit here, but that's okay. All right, get ourselves nice and low. Again, I gotta adjust my head position like 30 times in this thing so I can like actually like know where the nose is and everything like that. All right, so we chose an airspeed of about 80, so we'll go get a setup for that real fast. Oh, I'm sorry, 87. There's our runway. Line us up. Lynn gear are gonna come down. I'm gonna pop down those flaps. Go ahead and check to make sure my controls are set well. Oh, G U M P F L S. That looks pretty good to me. I'll just start slowing down. Basically, power out at this point, and we're just gliding. At a pretty aggressive uh, feet per minute rate there, which doesn't surprise me. Now, another additional problem with this aircraft, I should say, implication is the fact that we are a tail dragger. So we have to be kind of mindful that when we cut the power, we're going to have a real strong nose up tendency here. All right, so I can see that even at a 90 knots, we are sinking like crazy right now. And I'm just going to give it just a little bit of power there. That looks pretty good. Whoop, we got ourselves that nice little crosswind that we saw from earlier, and it's actually very difficult to fly that stabilized approach here. Uh, getting very low. Gotta pull that nose up just a little bit. There we go. And it's just very difficult to get down to 97 and still be able to see over the nose. I'm looking right now at our attitude indicator, and our attitude indicator is about four, or two or three degrees over the horizon right now, which is pretty substantial. There's our 90. Come over the top of the trees again. We're gonna get bounced around pretty hard. Almost clipped a tree. That's okay. I have to earn this landing. All right, there's that 90. Go ahead and reduce the power. We're going to pull that nose up. And we're going to put that right wing down first. Going to come down nice and easy. 
And we're down. Nice. Go ahead and hold it. Whoa. <laughs> Apparently we're not. Whoa. Whoa. Ride him, cowboy. <laughs> it turns out that the brakes on these are these new advanced slotted disc brakes, and they're unbelievably good. All right, we're here. <laughs> that was a little close. All right, let's discuss. So we tried the 182, and uh, as we saw in that article there, um, for real, when we flew at that 1.3, it was dangerous. It was very difficult to see over the nose and very, 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 very sketchy. When we uh, grabbed this at Beach 18 and tried the same sort of effect, the speed was actually pretty good. Um, it was pretty much the same speed the whole way down. It wasn't that difficult to control. I would like to have had a little more speed, so I'd have a little bit more control at that touchdown point there, but it actually works. So I think our kind of our final conclusions here, and I hate to say this, is as much of a rule of thumb as the 1.3X is, use what the manufacturer says. Uh, they're probably going to know based on test flights what's best, but at the same time is, you know, do what you got to do sometimes. And especially when you get planes like this, when you start getting really, really heavy, you really need to be able to see the runway in order to safely affect the landing. Enjoy.